No, it, it, it really is a pleasure for me to be here and, and to speak on a subject that, as Dr. Jacob said, is, uh, is near and dear to my heart. Uh, and we'll talk about why that is in, in just a minute or two. Uh, and, and I hope to be able to share some of my thoughts as we promote and participate in this Eth Ethics Awareness Week as proclaimed uh, by Dr. Steve Wrigley, our Chancellor. I think it'd only be fitting and appropriate that we begin this week-long emphasis on ethics by reviewing the BB&T Center for Ethical Leadership and how it came to be here at the University of North Georgia. I know many of you know this, but I think there are probably some in our room who have joined us in the last six years that, that may not know how this came about. So some six years ago, I contacted BB&T and requested that they consider a donation to the University of North Georgia. Uh, prior to that time, to my knowledge, oh, they might have made a $5,000 donation here or a $2,500 donation there. Uh, but BB&T had never done anything of real significance uh, in the way of donations uh, to the university. That request was looked upon very favorably by BB&T, and they asked that we put together a proposal for the establishment of a program here at UNG that would serve the in unmet needs of our entire region. And under the leadership of the Dean of the Mike Cottrell College of Business, a committee was appointed consisting uh, of Dr. Matt McConnell, uh, Dr. Richard Oates, and others, uh, and had the full support of Dr. Jacobs. A plan was then developed and subsequently presented to bb &T to establish the bb &T Center for Ethical Leadership. That plan aligned with one of the bb &T current initiatives of developing through training of leaders who have a great emphasis on ethics. The center was subsequently granted a $1 million grant by bb &T that was to be paid at the rate of $200,000 per year. Those funds were matched by the university at $100,000 per year for, for the five years. Thus, the BB&T Center for Ethical Leadership began with Rose Proctor as its director. And I'm pleased to say that under Rose's leadership and with outstanding support from Dr. Jacobs, the Mike Trail College of Business and many others here at UNG, this center is having a very significant impact on helping develop ethical leaders in many areas of this North Georgia region and has recently expanded that sphere of influence um, and leadership across our entire state. And as I think most of you know, uh, as Matt McConnell mentioned again today to me as we came into the meeting, uh, the University System of Georgia is now leaning very heavily on the bb &T Center for Ethical Leadership as they promote testing and training throughout our entire USG system. As each of you know, the University of North Georgia has five core values, which you see here on our screen. <clears throat> and those are all the basis of what we do here at UNG. Those values are integrity, excellence, service engagement, and student focus. I don't think time permits today for us to go in depth and look at each of these values. However, I'd like for us to think for a few minutes on integrity and the very significant role it plays in our development of leaders who exhibit, exhibit ethical thoughts and behavior in their everyday way of life. If I ask in this room for you all to give a definition of ethics and integrity, there'd probably be as many definitions as there are people in this room. Uh, <clears throat> but if we, if we look to the dictionary, it defines integrity as firm adherence to a code of moral values. In our UNG core values, it is defined as cultivating in ourselves and others the willingness and steadfastness to act honestly and ethically. Still others define integrity as doing the right thing or what you do when no one is looking. And by the way, 
there's really never a time when somebody is not looking at you because you people in this room are leaders. You're leaders in this institution. You're leaders in the communities within which you live. And I doubt that there's a time that someone isn't looking at you. Let me, let me say another thing right here. Uh, I always tried to emphasize at, to our people at the bank. Most of you know I was in banking for 53 years. Uh, but that you are, we'll refer to the original bank here as the Bank of Dahlonega, you are the Bank of Dahlonega. Wherever you are, no matter the time of day, no matter the place, I would say to you, you are UNG. Wherever you are, whatever you do. And so whatever actions you take, positively, and hopefully only a few times negatively, but we're human, negatively reflects upon not only yourself, but UNG. So I think that's, <clears throat> that's very important that we keep that in mind. <clears throat> I think we can look a little deeper and see how honesty plays a major role in integrity. Honesty is the foundational value with regard to character. Without honesty, I would propose to you that a person's character is lacking in some respects. Without honesty, there is no trust. Without trust, there is no organization or societal growth because there are no relationships. Honesty is not relative. Rather, it is an absolute value. Integrity is living out our values on a consistent basis. Being honest is simply being consistent with reality. To be dishonest is to be in conflict with reality. <clears throat> and, and that is, in fact, self-defeating. Primary reason individuals fail is because they become disconnected from reality. And by that disconnection, uh, they pretend that facts are other than they are. I fear that a great many of our young people, as well as many of our adults, are falling into this trap, and it's having a profound effect, in many cases a lifetime lasting effect, on those individuals and ultimately on our society. To be honest does not require that we know everything. However, we must be responsible for saying what we mean and meaning what we say. Because we've developed our principles logically based on reality, we will always act consistent with our principles. Regardless of the short-term benefits, acting inconsistently with our principles is to our long-term detriment. We should not therefore believe in compromising our principles in any situation. Principles provide carefully thought out concepts that will lead to our long-term success and happiness. Violating our principles will always lead to failure. As we continue here on the long tradition of building leaders who exhibit the highest level of integrity, I think it is supremely important that we emphasize integrity and ethical behavior in those leaders. UNG, with its rich military heritage and the code of honor that we expect all our students to adhere to, reflects the highest commitment to that integrity and ethical behavior. Everyone in this room is in a position of leadership here at UNG. And I know many of you personally, and I'm firmly convinced that each of you make every decision you are called on to make with the utmost integrity. And I can assure you that the many thousands of students that we serve are watching those decisions, and you can never underestimate the impact of those decisions that you make having on those students. <clears throat> Sometimes those decisions we make in our minds are insignificant. But I can assure you that there really are no insignificant decisions that we make. And the effect that that will have on those students is insurmountable. To attain the University System of Georgia's priorities of degree attainment, affordability, and efficiency, we must incorporate ethical decision making in all that we do. And we must be good stewards of the resources that are entrusted to us. I know this institution has through the years and continues to have 
with the uh, UNG system a record of very good stewardship on the resources that we're entrusted with. And I would challenge each of you to continue that strong uh, good stewardship. Throughout my 53 years of banking, I've been called on to make numerous decisions, both large and small, and it is my hope and prayer that I made them all with great degree of integrity. I always emphasized to the people in leadership that I was fortunate enough to be associated with that in most all cases, the small things can matter the most. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of what I consider small things that I really think mattered a lot. If I, as CEO of the bank, and I was walk, as CEO of the bank, I walked across the parking lot and noticed a piece of litter and I failed to pick it up, then any of the employees who witnessed that might say, well, if the leader, me, didn't pick, up, pick it up, then why should I? However, I think the converse is also true, that if I did what a good leader should do and set the example by picking up picking it up, then those who might be looking on would probably follow suit and pick up the next piece of litter they saw in the parking lot. Another example that I see often, and I'm sure you all do too, and today would probably be a perfect example of where you might see the one I'm fixing to give you even more. <clears throat> Let's say you're shopping at Walmart. You finished your purchases, you push your buggy out to your car, you load your packages of whatever, bags of whatever you bought into your car. And you look around and the buggy rack is, let's say 20 steps away. How many times, and I know y'all have all seen it, do you see people push that buggy up to the front of the parking place, which then affects two more parking places, or push it up on the island versus push it down to that buggy rack? Now, somebody is probably watching you do that. And that somebody might be a student here at the university. And they're gonna say, well, if that leader doesn't set the example by putting that buggy in the rack, then why should I follow that leader? I, I know that's a, <clears throat> that's a small thing to be a pet peeve. But, but I've witnessed so many times and this one gets to me even a little more. An elderly person like me will push that rack, push that buggy 30 paces to that rack. But that teenager, I'll call it, or young person just pushes it right up there to the end of the parking lot. That's just one that really bugs me, I'm sorry. But I, I think that is a, both of these really are very trite examples of what, is that unethical? Eh, no. I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't say that's unethical. Uh, but does that say a little about the integrity of the person? Because to me, what that says is I don't care about you. I just care about me. <clears throat> and I don't think that's integrity, quite honestly. I think integrity is for me to care as much about that little three-year-old kid that's walking the aisle in Walmart with his parent or grandparent as I do about anybody in the highest places of authority. I'll close with a quote from a very good friend of mine. Some of you I know in education know Dr. Nito Cobain, who is the president of High Point University in High Point, North Carolina. <clears throat> and Nito said, we are inclined to excuse in ourselves behavior that we find unacceptable in others. Think about that. Thank you again for this opportunity, and, and I look forward to associating with you and fellowshipping with you a little later. Thank you.